Good morning, and welcome to Third Church, New York City. Let's begin by singing hymn number 218. I'll read the first verse. O life that maketh all things new, the blooming earth, the thoughts of men, our pilgrim feet wet with thy dew, in gladness hither turn again. Hymn number 218. read from the Bible. Proverbs. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Let's pray for the congregation, first in silence, then we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. I'll read the spiritual interpretation given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all, and all. Let's sing hymn number 60. Fight the good fight with all thy might. Christ is thy strength, and Christ thy right. Lay hold on life, and it shall be thy joy, and crown eternally. Hymn number 60. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. The Wednesday testimony meeting includes singing hymns, reading from the Bible and the Christian Science textbook, and the opportunity to hear how people are living, what they are learning from their study of Christian science. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Services are held online and in person, and all are welcome. Third Church offers Sunday school classes online and in person for children and teens. These free one-hour classes are held each Sunday. At Sunday school, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth. For more information on times and classes, please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. 
Third Church maintains a reading room at the lower on the lower level of this building. The reading room provides a quiet place for prayer and study. Here you may purchase books and recordings on Christian Science. The reading room has the latest issues of the Christian Science Monitor, an award-winning international news weekly, available to read or purchase. Reading room hours are Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 p.m. Eighth Church invites you to a talk on Christian Science titled, Meaningful Change for Ourselves and the World given by Mark McCurdy's on Monday, May 23rd at 7.30 p.m. For more information, go to 8th Church's website, 8thChurchNYC.org. The solo, sung by Jenny Lynn Stewart, is titled, If We Live in the Spirit. The composer is Clement W. Barker.
Thank you. Friends, the Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passage, passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible texts and their spiritual import and application to all, to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. Today's sermon can be found on page 36 of the full-text edition of the Christian Science Quarterly and page 28 of the Citation Edition. The subject is Mortals and Immortals. The golden text is from 2 Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. The responsive reading is from 2 Corinthians. Ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The following citations comprise our sermon. The Bible. Job. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Isaiah. Now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. John. These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. 1 Corinthians now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, 
neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I'll read from the Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Jesus gave the true idea of being, which results in infinite blessings to mortals. Mortals are the counterfeits of immortals. In divine science, God and the real man are inseparable as divine principle and idea. When examined in the light of divine science, mortals present more than is detected upon the surface, since inverted thoughts and erroneous beliefs must be counterfeits of truth. With its divine proof, science reverses the evidence of material sense. Every quality and condition of mortality is lost, swallowed up in immortality. Mortal man is the antipode of immortal man in origin, in existence, and in his relation to God. Mortals are not fallen children of God. They never had a perfect state of being, which may subsequently be regained. Mortal mind must part with error, must put off itself with its deeds, and immortal manhood, the Christ ideal, will appear. Second Corinthians If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Acts and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. Paul was not at first a disciple of Jesus, but a persecutor of Jesus' followers. When the truth first appeared to him in science, Paul was made blind, and his blindness was felt. But spiritual light soon enabled him to follow the example 
and teachings of Jesus, healing the sick and preaching Christianity throughout Asia Minor, Greece, and even in Imperial Rome. Saul of Tarsus beheld the way, the Christ, or truth, only when his uncertain sense of right yielded to a spiritual sense, which is always right. Then the man was changed. Thought assumed a nobler outlook, and his life became more spiritual. He learned the wrong he had done in persecuting Christians, whose religion he had not understood. And in humility, he took the new name of Paul. He beheld for the first time the true idea of love and learned a lesson in divine science. Immortal spiritual man alone represents the truth of creation. When mortal man blends his thoughts of existence with the spiritual and works only as God works, he will no longer grope in the dark and cling to earth because he has not tasted heaven. Carnal beliefs defraud us. They make man an involuntary hypocrite, producing evil when he would create good, forming deformity when he would outline grace and beauty, injuring those whom he would bless. The real man is spiritual and immortal, but the mortal and imperfect so-called children of men are counterfeits from the beginning to be laid aside for the pure reality. This mortal is put off, and the new man, or real man, is put on in proportion as mortals realize the science of man and seek the true model. In Colossians 3, 4, Paul writes, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, be manifested, then shall ye also appear, be manifested with him in glory. When spiritual being is understood in all its perfection, continuity, and might, then shall man be found in God's image. The absolute meaning of the apostolic words is this, then shall man be found in his likeness, perfect as the Father, indestructible in life, hid with Christ in God, with truth in divine love, where human sense hath not seen man. By putting off the old man with his deeds, mortals put on immortality. Psalms Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Acts Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem? and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he assayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them, how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, 
and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. When the final physical and moral effects of Christian science are fully apprehended, the conflict between truth and error, understanding and belief, science and material sense, foreshadowed by the prophets and inaugurated by Jesus, will cease and spiritual harmony reign. The lightnings and thunderbolts of error may burst and flash till the cloud is cleared and the tumult dies away in the distance. Then the raindrops of divinity refresh the earth. As St. Paul says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God of spirit. Science reveals the glorious possibilities of immortal man, forever unlimited by the mortal senses. The determination to hold spirit in the grasp of matter is the persecutor of truth and love. Remember, thou Christian martyr, it is enough if thou art found worthy to unloose the sandals of thy master's feet. To suppose that persecution for righteousness' sake belongs to the past and that Christianity today is at peace with the world because it is honored by sects and societies is to mistake the very nature of religion. Error repeats itself. The trials encountered by prophet, disciple, and apostle, of whom the world was not worthy, await in some form every pioneer of truth. If you launch your bark upon the ever agitated but helpful waters of truth, you will encounter storms. Your good will be evil spoken of. This is the cross. Take it up and bear it, for through it you win and wear the crown. Pilgrim on earth, thy home is heaven. Stranger, Thou art the guest of God. 1 Corinthians Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Acts And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the, unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord, for he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The way through which immortality and life are learned is not ecclesiastical, but Christian, not human, but divine, not physical, but metaphysical, not material, but scientifically spiritual. We worship spiritually only as we cease to worship materially. Spiritual devoutness is the soul of Christianity. Advancing to a higher plane of action, thought rises from the material sense to the spiritual, from the scholastic to the inspirational, and from the mortal to the immortal. The church is that institution which, appor which affords proof of its utility, and is found elevating the race, rousing the dormant understanding from material beliefs to the apprehension of spiritual ideas, 
and the demonstration of divine science, thereby casting out devils or error and healing the sick. Christian science and Christianity are one. Psalms. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness, for by thee I have run through a troop and by my God have I leaped over a wall. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and setteth me upon my high places. Acts And there sat a certain man at Lystria, Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Christianity is again demonstrating the life that is truth and the truth that is life by the apostolic work of casting out error and healing the sick. He to whom the arm of the Lord is revealed will believe our report and rise into newness of life with regeneration. Let Christian science, instead of corporeal sense, support your understanding of being, and this understanding will supplant error with truth, replace mortality with immortality, and silence discord with harmony. The basis of all health, sinlessness, and immortality is the great fact that God is the only mind, and this mind must not must be not merely believed, but it must be understood. The prophet of today beholds in the mental horizon the signs of these times, the reappearance of the Christianity which heals the sick and destroys error, and no other sign shall be given. Mortals must look beyond fading, finite forms if they would gain the true sense of things. Where shall a gaze rest but in the unsearchable realm of mind? We must look where we would walk, and we must act as possessing all power from him in whom we have our being. Psalms the Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Acts Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things we are too superstitious, for as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God, that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. For in him we live and move and have our being. Immortality is not bounded by mortality. Mortal man is really a self-contradictory phrase. For man is not mortal, neither indeed can be. Man is immortal. We should consecrate existence not to the unknown God, whom we ignorantly worship, but to the eternal builder, the everlasting Father, to the life which mortal sense cannot impair, nor mortal belief destroy. The evidence of man's immortality will become more apparent as material beliefs are given up and the immortal facts of being are admitted. Man reflects infinity, and this reflection 
is the true idea of God. God expresses in man the infinite idea forever developing itself, broadening and rising higher and higher from a boundless basis. So far as the scientific statement as to man is understood, it can be proved and will bring to light the true reflection of God, the real man, or the new man, as St. Paul has it. During the collection in the church, online contributions can be made through our website, thirdchurchnyc.com. Let's sing hymn number 82. God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year. God is working his purpose out and the time is drawing near. Nearer and nearer draws the time. The time that shall surely be when the earth shall be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Hymn number 82.
I'll read the scientific statement of being from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Amen. Amen.